<laughs> Look at that. You cannot even read anything here. So this is really funny. Welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel, or today better, the Display Galaxy channel. As you might know from other videos, I am also very much into special displays, as small CRTs and obscure stuff. A friend of mine gave me a display, which is indeed that interesting that I could not resist to make a video out of it. So, it's obviously a flat panel and the front is made fully of glass. Well, when I inspected it, I was immediately sure that this is not a LCD display. Cause I could not see any filters in the front and the structure inside the glass looks also completely strange. I assumed that this could be maybe a plasma display. A bunch of 64-bit high-voltage CMOS drivers, a high-voltage power supply, let me also thought that this must be maybe a plasma display. We can also find on the PCB that the display was built by Planar International and has uh, the type number EL640.400C2, which indicates a resolution of 640x400, which sounds already very interesting. But let's check now the technical datasheet I could find in the web about that. This is not a plasma display, not a LCD display, this is called a TFEL display, which I have never heard of before. TFEL stands for Thin Film Electroluminescence, very interesting, and promised to be a display for use in extreme operating conditions. And very nice, this is actually an ember colored display. How cool is that? I'm already very, very curious. With a viewing angle of 179 degrees, which is extremely good, and a response time of smaller than 1 milliseconds, well, this is extremely fast, I would say now. So what are the general features of this TFEL display? Instant on in cold and hot temperatures, no need for heating and cooling, very long lifetime, extremely stable brightness, measured 100,000 hours with higher than 85% left of initial lumina luminance. TFEL display brightness, contrast, viewing angle and response time are the same across the entire operating temperature range. Very interesting. Wide viewing angle of almost 180 degrees with crisp and clear image. So I'm really curious if this is working and what we can see later on. Very fast response time of smaller than one millisecond. Extremely rugged and solid TFEL display structure. Very long production lifetime. Wow. So this thing is extremely cool and promise a lot now. So what is exactly the electroluminescence technology here? The EL glass panel is a solid state device with a thin film luminescence layer sandwiched between transparent dielectric layers and a matrix of row and column electrodes. The row electrodes in back are aluminum, the column electrodes in front are transparent. The entire thin film device is deposited on a single glass substrate. Maybe also some details about the display operation modes. The EL640 display has two input timing modes. VGA mode supports standard 200, 350 and 400 row VGA modes and normal mode is similar to normal mode in most planar displays. Timing mode is determined from combination of the polarities of the vertical sync and horizontal sync pulses and the blank signal at the rising edge of the vertical sync pulse and the polarities of the vertical sync and horizontal sync pulses at the rising edge of the blank pulse. In VGA modes the number of columns is determined by the number of uh, vertical clock pulses during a horizontal pulse. Yeah, and this display gets connected through the feature connector of a VGA card. Yeah, this is the 26 pin connector you can find on many older uh, VGA cards. This interface provides a very high data transfer from the video card to another device. And until now, the only device I saw to connect here uh, were some MPEG decoder cards. But connecting a display directly to this connector is also for me the first time right now. And I'm already extremely curious if this is working and how it will look like, especially playing Doom on it as usual. You need to play Doom on anything. For the setup I'm using just standard stuff. The VIC VA501 socket 7 motherboard, 
an Intel 200 MHz MMX CPU, we have got 32 MB of RAM here, then we have the IDE CF adapter, an ESS Audi drive to have, prop, to have proper sound while playing Doom on our Ember screen, and of course we need to take a VGA card which has the feature connector here. This is actually the Trident with the 8900D-R chip running at zero weight state. This is one of the fastest ISA cards you can get out there for your DOS setup if you have only ISA available. On the display I connected already the power cable. It needs by the way 5 and 12 volts and I will connect it with the standard Molex connector to the computer PSU. And of course the 26 pin ribbon cable to connect it to the video card. So everything is installed, everything is place in place now and yeah I hope I set the camera and the light by the right angle that we can see something. Let's switch it on and hopefully we can see an image. And yes we have a really nice amber image. Extremely sharp I can say and also the brightness is not so bad. Wow wow I'm already fascinated how good this looks like. So it's really really sharp. Looks looks actually not that bad and our computer is also booting nicely, that's good. I will switch on more light. Yeah, even with more light, so if we have more light, yeah, it, you can you can still see something. So the fact that the surface here is grayish and not dark, yeah, it makes the, the, the whole image a little bit uh, yeah, blurry, I don't know, it doesn't look that nice, yeah. But still, even with strong light and I have really a strong uh, LED light up there now, um, you can see something on the screen and uh, the, the image and the, the, the letters here are extremely sharp. So uh, basically um, I like that already a lot. Let's switch off the light that we can see on the camera here more. Well, yeah, it's super responsive. It's just, just cool. It feels nice to look at that display. Yeah, then let's try again. This is the first thing. No, before we try again, let's try let's try something normal in text mode. Oh, whoa, what is ongoing here? Well, that ain't good. <laughs> Sys info is opened now. What can we see? Nothing. Ah, uh, just black and white. And therefore, I remember now in the specification I was reading this is a mono screen. By color, it was just written mono therefore we cannot see anything which is somehow a shade yeah there were other models existing i found in the web where it's written monochrome but for this typical model it was written just mono therefore i expect here that we can just see black or white or in this case amber and black and therefore we cannot see anything here on the screen so this looks actually ridiculous yeah <laughs> also the chart here for the cpu benchmark nice yeah we have a orange screen here without any information huh. so now i am already very curious how a game look like or if this thing is anyhow usable for something to play let's try with prince of persia first Ah, look at that. <laughs> you cannot even identify what is there. <sighs> yeah, well, can you see something? Yes. Does it look nice? No. This is, this is not nice. Well, the, the screen is so nice. It's bright. It's extremely sharp. This color, it's really, it's really fancy and somehow Ember screens, yeah, they have their own charm. But yeah, this mono thing here, ah, this actually, nah, this doesn't look nice. Uh, let me try setup. I know maybe in CGA, <laughs> look, even the menu here you cannot even use. But thankfully we can see here this. Let me try this here to CGA with four colors and this might help that we can see here something better. Exit to those. Yes. 
This looks actually better. So in CGA we can definitely see more here now on this screen. Does it look perfect? No. Is it playable now? Yes. Yeah. Anyhow I'm happy that this screen is now working because otherwise everything would have been for nothing until now. Yeah, so what would be the use case for this screen? I have the feeling because uh, my friend got it from a trash somewhere, from an industrial trash, yeah, and I think the use case for a screen like that is, yeah, industrial applications, maybe only some text modes, but for sure not gaming. Should we try it, Doom? I'm scared now, because I was hoping to have a nice Doom experience here on this thing, but yeah, let's see. Text mode is really nice. <laughs> Look at that, you cannot even read anything here. So this is really funny. Oh my gosh. Look at that, you can't... You, I cannot even see anything, almost. Even the menu here, so... Maybe it's a little bit lower. If I would not know where to click here, no chance. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, actually you can see something. And because of that, that we played this game thousands of thousands of times already, I can go blind here through the level, but come on, this is really ridiculous how this looks like. Yeah, this is mono, no shades of gray or whatever. <sighs> yeah, now nah, this is, it's ridiculous. So it's not even playable. Um, it's an ice cream, but Doom, forget it. <laughs> Look at this. Check something else. Let's check Duke Nukem. Duke Nukem, if we can see here a little bit something here on the screen. <laughs> this looks so ridiculous. Yeah, as I said already, the screen is really nice. Orange, it's sharp, the pixels are... The pixels by itself are really nice, but this mono thing yeah, this is killing you. This is killing you. You cannot uh, do here anything. Ah, come get some, yes. Come get some picture. Nah, nothing. Absolutely ridiculous and not playable. Well, what should I say? What should I say more? <laughs> I have not many games in my mind I would be able to play here. Maybe Sokoban. Here we can put also for CGA mode, keyboard, yeah, so here with CGA games this display is somehow usable. Yeah, but still hard because you cannot even see nicely this guy here running around, yeah, but yeah, with CGA games, it seems that this game is at least a little bit playable. I'm a little bit disappointed now because yeah, I was hoping to get here a cool display. And don't misunderstand me, this display is really cool because the technology uh, I have never heard of. So it's it seems to be really a very reliable and, and nice technology, especially for industrial applications. But at the end... Uh, it's nothing for us retro gamers to play something on it. What is actually coming to my mind now is if what is what what will happen if I connect also additionally a monitor here. And this we will check now. I'm curious if we can drive this in parallel. And yes. Oh, so this is pretty cool. That means we can use both displays at the same time. So this makes uh, a lot more sense right now. And yeah, this is, uh, let's say, extending a little bit the possibilities uh, what to make with this display. Maybe uh, you can build it inside a case that you have somehow a text display on your case, but externally you still connect a monitor. Yeah, 
And well, yes, it's nice, this display. It's small, it's interesting technology, it's very sharp. Uh, we have ember color, but just text mode is fine. Mono in graphics with some games is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, but still, it was interesting to figure out what this is. I didn't know at all about this technology. And yeah, for sure, industrial applications, it's it's quite nice. Maybe you need to run here. The, the used, a good use case is to run here some custom program software where you just display some, um, some values of a machine or whatever. But it's definitely not a build to play Doom here or doing any graphic stuff on it. And this brings us quickly to an end of this video. I hope it was interesting for you to see also some other stuff in between on my channel, especially when it's interesting display technology. I enjoyed it to make this video and although it was not nice for gaming, it was at least worth to learn more about electroluminous tense displays. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Your Peter. Thank you.